Hey friends, Moo here, and today we have another guide for you. So the Grandmaster Proving Grounds Nightfall came out this week with the oh-so sought after Adept Palindrome as the drop, and you want to get your hands on it? Here's my recommendations on loadout and a guide to do it. The team comp we ran in the GM was one Hunter, one Titan, one Warlock, and here are the loadouts. All right, for the Hunter's loadout, I like to play with the bottom tree Night Stalker to allow you to always have your team in this with the Vanish and Smoke. It allows your melee charge to make your smoke bomb make people it comes in contact with invisible so enemies no longer target you, even though some of the targeting systems in the game still manages to target you, it helps in the long run. But alongside with the smoke bomb invis, you are able to combo that with Omni Oculus. It uses the exotic perk on Beyond the Veil. You gain a second smoke bomb, so it allows you to get more invis. And you also get a damage resistance, which seems to be equivalent to protective light. So it's very heavy in terms of damage resistance while you are invisible. And you also gain melee energy back, aka your smoke bomb when you make other people invisible with your smoke bomb, so you get more smoke bombs for throwing your smoke. For the general weapon loadout, this will be the same on all three characters. It's going to be Kinetic Sniper, allowing you to uh, use the mod Anti-Barrier Sniper. Um, you use an Energy Pulse, um, or such as Stars and Shadow, Last Perdition, Premonition, there's a, a handful of um, solar and void pulses that I could recommend. Um, otherwise, an energy 120 RPM hand cannon is this allows you to one shot the fireballs that the final boss shoots out. So it makes controlling that a lot easier, such as Igneous Hammer. Uh, you can use Bottom Dollar. Um, guns such as those and the heavy slot i like to just use anarchy makes things easy simple and safe allows you to to shoot two bolts and run away and get into cover be safe with omni oculus invis allows you to do that all over um in terms of mods i i'm running taking charge charged up for additional uh charge with light stacks so allows you to get up to three stacks with that i run powerful friends especially on a hunter because lights i like to increase my mobility and it also, when I become charged, my teammates also become charged or when they become charged because they have powerful friends on, I also become charged to turn on protective light, which is even more damage resists on top of the damage resists you get from Omni Oculus. So it allows you to stay alive even better. And in Grandmasters, it's really nice to use. Um, and I also like to use uh, shield break charge. It's just another form of getting charged. So it makes things even better for your team. Um, special finisher on the Hunter specifically because the super isn't the best um or the most useful uh in usually pretty much terms of anything um so you are the designated special ammo generator because you want to have special ammo at all times specifically for when you run into an enemy that has a barrier such as the barrier champion as as the colossus um so then you're able to use as most people on their teams are running anti-barrier sniper you want to be able to take down that shield um, without having his hp fully recovered and lastly i like using sundering glare as part of the art, uh seasonal artifacts uh mods uh from a from a great distance rapid precision hits uh against the target will weaken them um it's actually a pretty significant damage bonus that's just passively applied it's pretty easy to do so you just take them in the head a couple times with a 90 rpm and a 72 rpm sniper it takes uh two bullets to uh apply it from a distance and the pulse rifle it takes about three bursts and cannons i think it's three headshots um it's easier to apply with a pulse rifle because you have the full burst to to hit as well so yeah that is the hunter's loadout for the gm now for the titan loadout i like to run middle tree sentinel allows you to provide some healing for the team with your ability kills your abilities regen fairly quickly uh amongst each other um when you're getting 
ability kills in, in general with itself. You have controlled demolition for a bunch of AOE amongst grouped enemies. Uh, makes things a lot better. And then you have Banner Shield, which is the important part of the super. That combos with Ursa Furiosa uh, with Ursine Guard. Um, it allows you to you move faster while guarding as well as you when you take damage or block damage with your super, uh, you have the chance of gaining back up to, I believe it's 80 or 85% of your super back upon exiting your super and staying alive for a short duration after. It allows you to uh, spam your super as much as you need to or can, um, as long as your teammates will also be creating orbs with supers such as Tether, Chaos Reach, Well, whatever. Um, the quirk about it is if someone has a Well of Radiance on the ground, when you are blocking with your super, you will not get your super energy back if you stand in the Well of Radiance. You have to make sure you are blocking outside of the well um, or in front of the well, wherever. As long as you are not being healed by it, the game will accept you as taking damage rather than dealing damage to your overshield, which you will have from the well. So then it, the exotic perk actually registers. Then the weapon loadout is going to be the exact same. Kinetic Sniper, Energy Pulse, Solar Avoid with Anarchy. Um, and then the mods are going to be the same thing. Powerful Friends taking charge, Protective Light, uh, supercharged charged up um, radiant light it could be take uh, shield break charge and then obviously you have your seasonal mod like uh, you have uh, thundering glare for making an enemy weaker that's pretty much the same thing across the board running anti-barrier and unstoppable pulse rifle anti-barrier sniper of course um, so yeah that's that is what you'd be running on a titan or the Warlock, I like to run Well of Radiance. It's pretty straightforward. It's a bunch of healing, a bunch of buffing, over shields, protection, keeping your team alive while uh, fighting all the difficult enemies. Um, the exotic I like to run with that is Phoenix Protocol. This allows you to be able to spam your super. Um, it allows you to keep your well up as much as possible. You can gain up to 75% of your well back by getting kills inside of it with the perk Battle Hearth. Um, pretty straightforward. A lot of super, a lot of dead enemies. Then the weapon loadout is going to be the exact same. Kinetic Sniper, Energy Pulse, or Energy Hand Cannon, and Anarchy. It's pretty pretty much the same loadout across all three characters as, as, uh, as expected. In case you didn't know, we have a community Discord where you can come chat about Destiny or not Destiny. We'd love to have you. Also, I stream on Twitch a few days a week, usually on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday evenings, so you can come ask questions live if you'd like to. You can find all the links to these resources down below. The initial portion of the Grandmaster Proofing Grounds will be pretty basic. A lot of red bar enemies, some shielded harpies, uh, a handful of champions, primarily unstoppable champions. You'll run in, you will run into one barrier champion in the climb itself. And then you will also have the so-called mini boss battle with the, the big yellow bar in the entrance of the big tank. Now when the mini boss puts up his dome, you're going to notice this little pylon in the middle of the dome itself. You're going to want to walk inside and stick it with a singular anarchy shot. Not one, not two, not three. Then you're up a pega if you shoot three, just one. Now you're going to need to apply anarchy twice in order to break the dome. This is easiest if you have two guardians place a singular anarchy at the same time and it'll break the dome pretty quickly. Now 
just as I said in my predictions video I made earlier, the best spots you can do this room, the tank room in, is the lower left and lower right sides where you can hide behind the large vertical square piece of cover that can easily protect you from interceptors, tanks, champions from straight on. It covers a pretty broad spectrum of the room. Obviously, the primary targets for taking out first is going to be the two snipers on each side of the room. Sometimes they don't target you. Majority of times they do. Um, and the next target will be the champions slash enemies that are pushing you. Be aware that the interceptors will most likely one shot you if you're not standing in a well or if you don't have an overshield of some sort. They do a pretty hefty amount of damage as the modifier does add additional splash damage and their projectiles do splash damage if that wasn't made apparent now after you kill enough of the first wave of enemies you'll have a handful of war beasts show up to uh push up on you as well as the remaining enemies that are currently out these these enemies will continue to push you and you will have to continue to fight them until you clear out the entire wave and then that will proceed to the tank wave the tank wave will spawn a lot of the same enemies you can use an interceptor that was crashed from the previous wave if you set it up in front of one of the tank doors as a little way to prevent one of the tanks to come out of its garage so to speak so you can prevent it from actually shooting at you as it will not shoot if it's still stowed in the back room though i recommend you do this before you start the second wave of enemies so you don't just get demolished by the new champions that spawn and the new enemies that spawn alongside them now in this room don't be afraid to spam your supers your ursas your wells because it will generate back fairly quickly with how much how many enemies you are actually killing as well as how much damage you're actually able to block just remember to stand outside of the well if you're using those banner shield ursas to allow yourself to actually get the super regen so you're able to actually spam that super as much as you can now in a normal run there are a total of four champions that spawn in this room two during the interceptor wave and two during the tank wave sometimes there is a random chance i do not know what causes it that there can be an additional wave of enemies that spawn in i don't know if it's tied to a timer or if it's tied to a certain way you kill the ads that spawn in it can sometimes happen to where a third wave of champions and enemies will spawn in it will be a full wave of enemies as if it's a new tank wave or interceptor wave coming into the room so it'll be legionaries so on scions whatever you want to call them alongside two new anti-barrier champions that you'll also need to take out alongside them and then it'll follow up with war beasts and other enemies and such now this weird bug actually happened in this run that is showing in the background here and it actually prevented us from getting platinum on our run so it will bug out if you decide to kill all the enemies as that mis mysterious third wave will spawn i don't know exactly what caused it to do so but you still get the palindrome drops at the end of it just so you know you won't get completely shafted with loot you still get palindrome drops if you get gold on the nightfall The overload section of the strike isn't a whole lot different than the vanilla version of the strike. You just have to deal with four total champions, one unstoppable and three anti-barrier. You'll find one in each room, essentially. One unstoppable when you enter into the overload section, a barrier when you go into the middle section to dunk the first ball, another barrier when you enter the second overload ball section, and then the fourth barrier or the final champion will be when you re-enter the middle room to dunk the last ball. Once you are done with that room, you will open up the elevator door and there will be two champions in there with a bunch of other enemies, some war beasts, some phalanx, some legionaries, and so on. 
they will be unstoppable and barrier champions I recommend taking the time to do a couple of special finishers with your hunter to replenish your special ammo as of course all the barrier champions in this area eat up your special ammo economy pretty quickly. Before starting the boss fight, I highly recommend pre-placing well if you still have it from the previous areas as you get your super back from starting it at the right of proving totem. Upon starting the fight, just stick a couple of anarchy to the boss here and there, whittle his health down a third of his HP as at two thirds you will send it into the dome phase. Um, take your time clearing out the ads. Uh, keep line of sight on the boss as he will constantly be shooting out fireballs as well as projectiles from its cannon at you and your fire team when the fireballs are shot out be sure to either avoid using line of sight on cover sometimes that will not help otherwise you can shoot them it takes one burst of a pulse of adaptive frame or high impact frame otherwise a 120 rpm hand cannon will one shot them as well within range now when he goes into the dome phase two unstoppable champs will spawn in be pushed up in the room a tad so then the champions will properly walk out of their spawn doors sometimes if you sit in the back towards the entrance of the room one or both of the unstoppable champs will teleport on top of you and catch you completely off guard i've had this happen to me multiple times and almost cause a wipe and make you start all over now after clearing the two champions that spawn in from the dome phase carefully make your way in to the dome and break the pylon the same as you did on the mini boss at the beginning if you decide to not make your way in during the fireballs after a certain amount of launches of the fireballs the boss will no longer shoot them it is limited i want to say it's about 20 to 25 of them it takes a couple minutes for it all to stop but it will stop eventually 
now after breaking the dome of the first dome phase the boss will then roam around behind where that dome was previously formed it will never go past that towards the entrance of the room so you are fairly safe there keep in mind the fireballs and the cannon can still reach you so play line of sight and be prepared to shoot them now a new ad wave will spawn containing a handful of phalanxes and legionaries take them out as you please use a well be protective about it uh be very defensive as you can die very quickly in this room now once the ads are dead you can damage the boss and send it into the next dome phase when it goes into the next dome phase you stay right at the beginning of the room the two more additional unstoppable champions will spawn i recommend you stay around the first dome area when they do spawn as the boss goes into the second dome you can then prevent them from teleporting on top of you near the entrance of the room once you locate them walking out of their spawn doors then you can proceed to back up towards the entrance of the room and take your time passively taking them out one by one after the two final champions are dead in the strike you can then proceed to breaking the final dome of the boss fight and send them into the final phase to then defeat the boss this is the end of my Brandmaster Proving Grounds guide. Enjoy the rest of the boss kill here and enjoy your palindromes.